hope this video finds you well. This is very, very late. In fact, a whole month late. I've been working on a new video format that I'm still tweaking. I was also waiting for my electricity bill, which still hasn't come through, but I thought I'd better do a January update as it will be far too late. So let's get on with it. So if you're interested in the specific components of my solar setup, that will be featured in a little trailer at the end of the video. So you can either skip forward for that if you like, or just wait till the end and go through all the components of what I've got and how things are set up. But in terms of the solar performance for January 2022, things stack up like this. So for the month, the system produced 241.36 kilowatt hours. I consumed 98% of that, so 237.02 kilowatt hours of electricity were consumed, and I exported 4.35 kilowatt hours. I've mentioned before in previous videos, we are quite a high consuming household, two electric vehicles, the power wall, uh, all of us working from home and what have you. So we try to actually consume as much electricity as we can. Well, what I mean by that is consume as much electricity either for free from solar or during off-peak to minimize our costs. So we are on the feed-in tariff, which we'll touch on in a moment, but had we not been on the feed-in tariff and we were getting paid for exporting, that 4.35 kilowatts we exported would have made us a whopping 24 pence. So in terms of the total consumption for the house, we consumed 1.51 megawatt hours of electricity and 1.32 megawatt hours of that were pulled in from the grid. Now the majority of that will be off peak. Uh, we tend to have an average unit price of around six and a half pence. Obviously that will be increasing in future months because the, uh, the go tariff uh, fixed rate is currently coming to end at the end of the March. So in April, we'll see something slightly different. In terms of the solar though, our worst day was on the 8th of January. We only generated 1.32 kilowatt hours of electricity from solar. And our best day, unsurprisingly, was towards the end of the month on the 30th of January, where we generated 21.66 kilowatt hours. If you're not too sure about the spikes that you see at the beginning of the uh, graph because you're new to the channel, in the early hours of the morning when we're off peak, that's when we heat our hot water, charge our power wall, and also charge our vehicles. So you always see a spike uh, in between half past midnight and half past four every morning. If we look at how this January compared to other Januaries since we had the solar PV system installed, going back to January 2019 was the first January we had, we see that actually January 2022 has been the best generation month we've had since we had the solar installed. So that's actually quite interesting because some of the previous months hadn't been too good at all. As mentioned already, I am on the feed-in tariff. And what that means is, as well as obviously saving money from having to buy electricity from the grid because obviously we generated it ourselves, I also get paid a certain amount for everything we generate and then 50% of what we generate, which is known as deemed export. So each month, obviously I'm saving some money and getting paid some money, which all goes into what I call my solar payback calculator. And I top this up or tally this up, I should say, every year. I'm going to give you a, how the system is performing and the payback. And that's probably going to rock it in the future months, seeing as the electricity prices have gone up so much. So in terms of our feed-in tariff payments for uh, January 2022, they will be as follows. So for the generation from the feed-in tariff, we get paid £10.06. For the deemed export, we get paid £6.72. In terms of the electricity that we generated through the solar, so we didn't have to buy it from the grid, that equates to around £32.52. So that means a total benefit of self-generation and the feed-in tariffs in terms of our solar payback calculator is £49.31 for the month goes into our solar payback calculator. So in terms of all that electricity that we did pull in from the grid, um, a large majority would have gone to charging the cars, heating hot water and using uh, charging up the power wall. So that gets broken up as follows. So in terms of our car charging with our Zappi, 356.4 kilowatt hours of electricity went into car charging off peak. So that's when we're only paying five pence per kilowatt hour. That means we spent about 17 pounds and 82 pence on charging up both our Polestar 2 and our 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf. In terms of 
heating our hot water, we put 171.9 kilowatt hours of electricity into heating hot water over the month of January 2022. And that cost us £8.59 because again, we were doing it off peak. Outside of that, we do have off peak charging going to our Tesla Powerwall 2, as well as pretty much all of the solar generation also goes into either running the house or topping up the Powerwall 2. And for the month of January 2022, we were able to get 422.6 kilowatt hours of energy out of the Powerwall 2, which either was self generated or again, as I mentioned, came from off peak electricity costs. So that kind of sums up how the system has performed for January 2022. Stay tuned and we'll give you a little overview of what the Spectrum Geeks solar house setup is like. Thanks for this is the setup for the Spectrum Geeks solar house. On the main house, we have 30 Pimar solar panels. They are 300 watts each, giving us a nine kilowatt solar array. The rear roof is at a 30 degree angle facing 120 degrees southeast. So we can do a pretty good job of capturing the sun during the day. On the back of each of these panels is a solar edge PV power optimizer. These give more energy, increased efficiency and the ability for us to monitor each solar panel's performance individually. All of these connect back to a six kilowatt HD wave solar edge inverter. And we also have one of the solar edge energy meters with Modbus that gives us slightly more accurate meter readings and the ability to limit the amount of export if required. Many people ask the question, why do we have a six kilowatt inverter when we have a larger nine kilowatt array? And actually it's good practice to have a smaller inverter than you do have for your solar array and solar edge allow for up to 150% oversizing of your inverter to a solar array. In terms of our energy backup, we have a Tesla Powerwall 2 with the generation one gateway. So we don't actually have ability to operate when there is a power cut. So we have no backup capability. The Tesla Powerwall 2 is a 14 kilowatt hour battery storage, but it only has 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. This has an inbuilt inverter that provides up to five kilowatts continuous peak power, perfect for boiling the kettle, using the hob and the oven and running from the battery and minimizing our requirement to use the grid. We also have various My Energy products. We have the My Energy Hub. This connects both to the Zappi and the Eddy to have remote control access through the app as well as monitoring. We also have the My Energy Harvey. This provides wireless CT clamps to the Zappi and the Eddy, which means you don't have to run cables directly to them. We have the Generation 1 Zappi. This provides seven kilowatts of EV charging, as well as auto solar uh, diversion power to charge our electric cars. And we have the Generation 1 Eddy, which is connected to a three kilowatt immersion heater, and again, allows us to heat our hot water from solar surplus or from the grid as we want to. Finally, when not being self-sufficient, we have Octopus Energy as our energy provider. I've been with them since back in 2018, and I'm on their Go tariff, which means I have cheap off-peak electricity from half past midnight to half past four every morning, which is when I heat my hot water, charge up my power wall and my electric vehicles during the winter and summer months. If you're interested in joining Octopus Energy, please use the link in the description below. Both you and I will get 50 pounds credited to your account. I'm not just saying that because we both make a little bit of money, but Octopus Energy are the best energy supplier I've ever been with. No, they're not perfect, but they're better than most. Like. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please consider liking it, subscribe, and also check out some other videos. Again, there's solar stuff, flying stuff, car stuff, a playlist for pretty much everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.